hit you out here again. So, still messing with a sprinkler system. And uh, last week I did some uh, sprinkler heads and I went to uh, program everything on the clock, or that's what it's called, but the uh, controller. And I noticed uh, the controller needs to be replaced because the buttons were sticking. But in the meantime, when I was trying to set stuff, I'll put this thing open here. Oh, got some friends. Some ants. Uh, so I was labeling everything because I was trying to, uh, like I said, do the sprinklers and uh, labeled everything. And I noticed there was a extra wire in here, seven wire deal. Like, what the hell is that thing? Looked like a, you know, I didn't know what it was at first, but then I thought, holy crap, that's probably to uh, way up there in the front there. I got some uh, grass up by the road, and I think uh, whoever put this system in. And we gotta be going. I've been here probably 10, 15 years. Uh, there's no way up, way up front. And I'll show you in a sec. I'll go way up there. But uh, there's no in-the-ground sprinklers up there. But that wire's got to go somewhere, right? So, and it does lead that way. So I was thinking. And the the, the kicker is there is actually a uh, a spout up there for water. So I'm thinking somebody ran some poly pipe all the way up front to uh, to get the you know, to, to add a water spigot, and that's how I watered that grass up there, where, you know, you had to drag your hose up there and do that whole thing. But I'm thinking now that this wire is here, somebody probably ran wire up to there, so now I'm thinking, well, because I'm messing with this stupid sprinkler system, I gotta replace the controller and everything else, I might as well put some uh, sprinkler heads up front, and uh, that way I don't have to drag a hose, yeah? So that's why I'm going to make this video, just show how easy it is. I did a uh, whole system myself about 20 years ago in my old house. So we'll see how this goes, see how much I forgot. And uh, you can probably learn from my mistakes. But I'm happy that uh, there's a poly pipe already ran up there. And hopefully there's a wire that runs up there. So I don't have to dig all this up, run poly pipe or wire that's already up there. Hopefully. Let's go take a look. Right, it's been... Uh, couple of hours off camera so this is where that uh, hose bib came up and uh, like I said somebody ran poly pipe I don't know a good whatever 500 feet and maybe 300 feet whatever it is so this is where I uh, you know generally I hook the hose up drag it across and uh, that's how I water this up front by the by the road here no wire so I'm like ah oh, crap I thought I was gonna get golden so then I started trenching it out, trenching it out, I'm like, maybe they just didn't have enough wire to make it the whole way, right? So then I started digging, digging, digging. I'm like, it's got to be here, right? So I got, basically today, I was almost going to give up, then I started, uh, you know, skipping. <laughs> like, this digging thing ain't for me, so I started skipping holes, and hey, poof, I found it. It did uh, make it kind of uh, halfway, so I do want to go to uh, to the hardware store to get me some wire uh, and I also found a leak or maybe I caused the leak by digging uh, so I had to fix that right quick uh, and then that but there's where is it there's the wire right there so it comes up so I've got uh, I don't have to dig up the grass up towards the house so I'll, this is going to be easy street so let me finish uh, let me uh, wire this up and show you how easy to run this poly pipe and what I'm going to do is uh, hold on, hold on a second. so what my plan is uh, to run some poly pipe across this driveway and it's just gravel so I can dig it up, go into the curbs and uh, get some sprinkler heads on that side of the uh, so I can water that grass automatically. Let me get started. I gotta run to the store and get some uh, supplies, poly pipe and sprinkler heads and valves and a box to bury it and all that business, but I'll explain. See you in a bit. <sighs> so I guess first order of business is uh, shutting your water off which for me is easy to do a little valve there but this is the the controller the old controller which is probably 20 maybe 30 years old i don't know but what's going on here is uh the reason i have to replace the, the reason i'm doing this whole thing is because i started off with doing a sprinkler head then i was programming it and this thing is sticky the buttons like that yeah you know, see it see it move there it's like really glitchy and uh sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't like that's supposed to show watering days and it doesn't there it goes see it's kind of goofy like you touch a little bit so it needs to be replaced it doesn't work right sometimes on the day of watering it works sometimes it don't you know so like I said uh, 
got to replace that and I, I found this fella here which apparently it uses Wi-Fi but I like the the idea that apparently you can use a smartphone to turn it on from a remote location yeah so like I said I've got uh, six zones and this this actually looks like one two three more zones one two three I've got six zones in the yard uh, so this could have worked uh, for what I'm doing up front but because it's faulty I'm replacing it anyway that thing's an eight zone deal I'm pretty sure this is an eight zone although it looks like one two three four five six can't be a 12 zone I don't know anyways I do have six zones and all this wiring uh, probably should take a picture of everything but I've got extra wires here again it's been so long since I've done this uh, gonna have to relearn everything well let's let's just uh, slow your roll here let me uh, let me go ahead and do what I got to do out there first and I'll worry about this this sucker later I didn't even open the box yet so I'm getting ahead of myself no I don't even feel like doing it <laughs> we'll see what happens all right so the pipe from the basement is right there it comes out right so let me try to easily explain this. All right, so from wherever your water source is coming out, in my case it's the basement, I got the, the water pipe coming out and uh, the wire that goes to your controller coming out. Uh, and then from here, whoever did this, uh, they went and put a hose bib here, but also a backflow valve, which you're going to need. This isn't exactly a backflow valve. It was originally, but the mechanism broke and uh, there's no issue with backflow issues because this is way higher than anything I got underground. Uh, but anyways, you put your backflow valve here. You know, this whole thing is a backflow valve. but uh, And then it transitions into PVC uh, in this case. And then goes underground. You can't see it, but uh, once it gets underground, uh, it trans transitions into uh, the poly pipe. And that poly pipe is underground and it runs uh, to wherever your valve box is. And then from there... You, you hook up your your valves and, and all that and I'll show you that in a sec. Alright, so we're back up front with the valve box up here. So there's one, two, three, four, five. There is six zones, six uh, valves. Each each valve controls uh, four to five sprinklers. So this is the wire coming out of the basement. It is a ten wire deal. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see or not, but the black wire is common to each valve. So you got that, and then there's, uh, that's why there's, there's six valves, and that's why there's, uh, three wires left over. So I, I, I can use them to, uh, so there's three wires here, so I'm going to probably dedicate this, this, uh, gray one, and we'll, when we wire it to this new, this new wire here, the seven wire, we'll just put gray to black, so up there I'll know black is common and then we'll have these two other wires left over so I still have two zones left or two wires for one for each zone Whew. that's a lot of information all right so let me go back up front and, and uh, I do have to extend that one wire I, I, I bought some more uh, I bought some more seven wire probably too much about 100 feet of it uh, so because where where it ended I need to get it up towards the road and I'll have to splice that in and, and that'll control two more valves up front for two more zones and you'll see again I'm trying to explain this in my head might not make sense but you'll see yeah so we gotta dig a hole the width of that bottom piece this is the, this is the top cover gotta dig a hole so we can bury this and uh, we'll put it right about there dig a big hole bury everything I just moved the pipe out a little bit and uh, so this end of this is going to go in through the hole there and then we can work from there so let's do that first yeah it's just she's deep enough but uh, uh you can probably throw some cement in there or whatever you want to do to make it level or whatever or you can just use it as is and then when you put your valves in there you know you just using dirt is going to be uh i don't know because as water collects you know it kind of fills things up with a little dirt but i'm going to just use uh, some pavers here just to use as a base and uh, go from there so that's where I'm at okay so I got a trench uh, built under there or uh, trenched out under the driveway there or through the driveway and I guess if you have a cement driveway or a uh, tar tar on your driveway you're gonna be uh, it's gonna be more difficult <laughs> I don't know what you would do 
But uh, so I got this little hole here. That's where the valve box is going to be, and of course, uh, get everything going across here. And uh, come out there. So let me put this uh, poly pipe in here under the curb and through the driveway so I can uh, button this up. At least uh, that'll be done, and I'll get to that probably tomorrow. Uh, so we just uh, put that on the ground for now. Just leave loose, loose ends, fill that in. And so that's basically the setup I'm going to have. Just two valves coming out. Uh, so I, I gotta cut all this up and glue it up. I have to use X's here, uh, four ways, because they didn't have T's. Home Depot ran out of T's. They didn't know when they were gonna have any, so I'm gonna have to make uh, just use these four ways and cap off the ends here. But that'll work. And I'm also gonna extend it uh, further down the line to have a hose bib uh, just out towards the road there. So, but putting these valves in, this is gonna go in the valve box over here. And uh, I've got, er, well, I've still got to cut some hoses, but let me build this manifold right quick, put these valves together. Okay, so I didn't get a chance to uh, put this together on video, but these uh, these X's, like I said, they're the only things uh, Home Depot had. So these, this should be a T, and then this could even be, this, this X right here could be a uh, 90 degree angle just to go into this last valve. But I'm extending it out just because I want a hose bib uh, out towards the road. And uh, these don't need to be here. These uh, ends, it's, it's, like I said, this is all that I have to work with. So I'm just capping these off. So all you got is uh, basically, a, 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 I'm using one inch, whatever you got, three quarter inch, inch and a half, doesn't matter. Uh, these are one inch, one inch valves. So the one inch poly pipe comes in here, under the, it goes under this barb uh, end here, you know, and you clamp it with your clamps. And then it gets threaded into, I got one, two, three, <coughs> oh, four. Five and six, those uh, one inch, uh, they're, they're threaded. So, and then there's a little bit of uh, straight pipe. You know, you glue everything together. It's, it's, it's simple to do. I'm just trying to explain it. And then uh, coming out the valve here. So, this is the water coming in and uh, going into your valve. And then the hose bib, I mean, uh, the poly pipe going to your sprinkler heads. There's a, there's a barb and there. Of course, this screws into your valve. Uh, so, that's what I got. I just don't have it on video. Uh, it's pretty simple to do. It's just basically, you know, PVC pipe, and uh, everything here comes from Home Depot, anyways. Uh, so you can find stuff. Yeah. So get that poly pipe on. A little bit of a bear, but don't forget to put your clamps on before you do all that. So I just kept, uh, you know, wiggle them in, wiggle them in. But on these sides, I'm just going to do a piece, a little section. This is going to the hose bib, and this is coming from the water supply. I'm just going to add these two pieces, short pieces. Uh, so I can get them on there, bang them on there, crimp them up, and then uh, it would be easier to make a splice out here somewhere rather than trying to get in the box and whatnot because right now the valve box, you know, I can push this down to wherever I need it once I bury it, but, or I can move this box around a little bit, but so it'll be easier to, yeah, sure, I'll do it right now. Easy to bang this home with your, uh, everything exposed. Rather than trying to fit a full piece of pipe on there. Yeah. I just keep uh, twisting and popping it in there. But like I said, uh, with a little shorter piece of hose, then I can, you know, make a, uh, a junction here to go out towards. I got to take a deeper trench out towards the road for a hose bib and same thing here I'll just add a piece on the other end you could see it just sticking out there and a short piece this is the that hose coming from towards the house and then uh, I'll add a short piece here and then you know, I'll get the two where I need to cut it and then add a junction it'll be easier to uh, you know work them in like that with more more space so I'll do that and then uh, before I bury I'll show you yeah, so nothing like so I used uh, what they recommend is those little bleeder valves I open them up make sure all the no debris is coming out once you open them up it gives a you know stuff comes pouring out but I guess it's uh, if there's any debris in there I didn't want to get it in a valve it'll come out them bleeder valves but anyways I use a little HVAC tape to hold back uh, some of the sand and dirt that's gonna fall in there when I backfill it uh, it's obviously not gonna be you know it's not gonna I could poke your finger right through it, but as long as I fill it in, 
I just didn't want a lot of sand going in there right away. Uh, so let's backfill this, see what happens. Alright, so we'll let that settle in, get everything backfilled, as if nobody was even here. Um, so I'll wire that up tomorrow, I'm running out of time today. So the valves work, water comes out the other side. Today was pretty good. Was able to get everything done. And that's that. We'll just let, uh, let things settle in, rip it around, blah, blah, blah. And that hose bib over there, that'll settle in too. So now I have water over there for going way up front towards the road. And that, let's see, what's up next? All right, so time to start digging. So I got my little shovel here, and I'm uh, just going to make a, a line out in the zone I got proposed and uh, cut the side manually because yeah it'd be way easier to use a ditch witch but uh, there's not one for like a car ride for about an hour to get one. I've rented one before at Taylor Rental and there makes life easy but uh, they close so I'm not going an hour away to get a rental tool so old manual manual labor so I'm gonna start remove up what I'll do is cut two lines in the grass take the sod away and take my uh, digging tool get down on the earth lay some pipe lay some uh, some uh, things I'll show you when I get going there So after I use the pickaxe, get down a little further. I'm, I'm going down about the width or the length of a uh, sprinkler head, you know. Plus the way I want to do it is uh, I'm just going to lay some poly pipe and put one of these deals in, uh, you know, in line. Poly pipe and then uh, because this is a female and it's the only thing Home Depot had, I got to uh, put this and then an insert here, right. That'll go in there and then the sprinkler head. We'll, we'll, we'll tie on top of that. That's the way I'm going to do it. Because uh, basically that's all they had at the hardware store. So there's always one more I want to see. I still got to make this connection here and uh, do a couple moves here, but basically uh, I got everything stapled in. I'm about to take take this section of grass up that looks like a mole. Went to town, big ass mole. Um, and I already did, uh, you know, be messing with me. I already did the sprinkler head here. You can see that. And I teed it here and continued down here and uh, put that in. I forgot to show that in. Um, but it's pretty simple forward and straightforward. So I'm just going to uh, put a union here, lay this uh, pipe in, go this way, take this turf out obviously, put an inline uh, sprinkler here, and uh, do one at the end. So I'll show you that part. I forgot to do that. So let me get this wound out, wrapped up, and I'll show you how to do the connection. It's pretty simple. So I'm going to set this sprinkler up now because uh, I gotta put one of these fellows in, in line. Just wanna have the sprinkler ready to go. So I put a three gallon nozzle in, in the top here. I think I showed it before, but uh, so I have to use this little fella here, nipple. It's called a nipple. Put some uh, Teflon. C 
take that booger down and uh, this will go in line in a poly pipe and then this will screw into there you'll see. Alright so I got my trench off my T up there and I'm basically uh, going to put it right here in this corner. One, one sprinkler and I got my uh, trench going out to there so I'll put the ending, uh, the end of it there. So I already put the pipe in there so let's set it up right here. Yeah. So this is where I'm going to put the Get the stick your clamp on. Ah, forgot my forgot my handy dandy hammer. Doesn't matter. This is the pain in the ass, working these bitches out. So I guess, because I'm just a one-man show here, I got to do this uh, as I go. So I'm going to bury, bury all this. I'm not going to check for leaks. <laughs> just going to trust my work. I'm going to bury all this um, because, uh, like I said, I'm just one one fella. So to you know keep things going, I, I got to keep uh, burying this as I go. So let me uh, let me show that end end run there. That's that's pretty easy because then you could just bang it on instead of working it on like that. It is a pain in the butt working it on like that. But so let me bury all this uh, this hose in here and, and then go from there. So the end of the run is even easier. But if you had an elbow, which Home Depot was out, just just this part here, you would end it here, and send it up. But so I just made uh, this was a T, so I just ended it with a uh, plug there. So like I said, don't forget your doohickey. Yeah. We gotta make a, I do want to sprinkle over here somewhere, so I'm gonna have to bridge these two together and tee it off. One more sprinkler, one more tee, and we're done. Right, so that's the one zone. It's working out pretty good. It's leaking a little onto the neighbor's uh, property over there. Uh, but she'll be happy about that. So I've got uh, one, two, three, four. Oh! 
just got what four five on this and uh, it got more than half so I get to the other zone I'll probably just put four on this other half but there you have it all right so this is the valve box original valve box and this is the wire the new seven wire going up towards the uh, towards the road got a helicopter going overhead it must be looking for something I think there's a fire but uh so I just uh, all you need is three wires three out of seven I got the black one it, for whatever reason the, the colors are not the same on a new seven wire <laughs> so uh, I've got the uh, the black for the common that goes up towards the road and I'm using white and yellow and I guess I'll take you up there and show you what I did up there all right so this is the valve box up here the new one so I've got the seven wire coming in here and this is all I did I just took uh, two two wires one from each put them together put that on the black and then uh, the remaining one one I just used a uh, two of the wires, two out of seven, and I cl clipped the rest. You only need one wire for common. So let's say you had six valves in here, all six valves, there'd be one wire that goes to one, and that would be common. And uh, and then the other ones, uh, you just do according to source. I clipped all the rest of them off because I'm not going to need them. And that's all, we're that's all we got. Tested the system. It does work with the old clock. Now the easy part, the hard part's done. Got everything buried. Everything works. Planted some grass, valve box, good. Now all we gotta do is go wire that stupid clock, and this project is done. All right, so we're downstairs, we're gonna replace this clock. This should be the uh, last piece of this stupid puzzle I'm working on here. So it needs to be replaced, so let's figure out how to get this thing off of here. I'm gonna put this new one on here. Smart Wi-Fi indoor sprinkler timer. Uh, I think the thing cost, uh, I'll just it. Uh, anyways, we're gonna hook this up. See what the, the only reason I bought it is because it's got this app control. You can control it from a smartphone. I thought that was cool. Uh, so that thing's all taken down, and uh, I took it off the wall here just because uh, you have to, you know, be able to program this thing. And the wires came in from outdoors over here. You know, I needed a plug, but I moved this thing down here. Let me show you. So I just ran some. Uh, it's actually ten wire in here, so I have to do a little splice here. For, uh, this is the 10 wire because all I have is 7 wire so I'm just going to use two, two 7 wires, 14 and just uh, you know recolor code stuff so I just ran it out here but this is all this thing is right here so once we wire this oh, just drop something once we wire this it's going to be uh, you know I'll cover that the cover will go over it and it'll basically stay there you don't do any uh, programming from here you do it all from your smartphone so once this is all wired up and, and you know packaged up all that stuff's going to stay there it's not going to be bothered with so that's why I put it over by you know where everything else is out of the way um, so let me just finish wire or uh, finish splicing this up and I'll cut these wires at this point I'll show you how I'm going to wire this and uh, like uh, I still have to download that app but let me get to that uh, for the splice here like I was saying this is a 10 wire coming in and the 10 wire, I didn't have any, so I had, I had a lot of 7 wires, so I used two 7 wires. So I basically stuck to uh, color coded here for, for you know, the, the, the 7, and then uh, the extra 3. I have a uh, re, I got what, what's it, red is now pink, orange is now black, and white is now gray, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, wire is wire, but when it comes to wiring this, I gotta go get that app ready see what they say to do here but yeah so I thought there was gonna be instruction so I downloaded this uh, app via um, I think it's Beehive Orbit Beehive and it's asking uh, is your device powered on and ready to go my device is powered on there's a tab for it so you know didn't get very far yet and there's no instructions so I just assumed everything was uh, gonna be on the, the app as far as instructions so this 24 volt in, uh, I didn't uh, plug it in yet, but you basically have to uh, back all these screws off. They give you a little jeweler's screwdriver here, but you back all, the, they're already tightened down, so back all these screws off. Smart indoor timer's fine with me. Now that your Beehive device connected to your network, you can continue setting up your system. If you need to tell the device what zones you have connected and some information about how your yard is set up. If you already, if you are ready to do this, yeah, let's just do this. Zone connect. 
All right. Select the zones you have physically connected to a timer terminal. I didn't do any of that yet. So there's eight zones. Well, let's do that, and then I'll uh, I'll connect a zone and hit check. See what happens. Uh, so I don't want to uh, waste any more time here. So you, you, if you have one of these uh, timers, then uh, you know, but basically all the timers are the same. So you just need one wire from each valve plugged into, uh, you know, one of the zones. And if the other side of the valve, you know, those wires get bunched together and they all get plugged in uh, to one common. So I've got eight zones and whatever clock or timer you're using, it's the same idea. Just one wire for, for a zone and the rest of them get tied together for the other side and get plugged into common. So that's it. So we're basically done here, and uh, as far as the app goes, you know, if you're using this app, it's just, you know, you plug in the, uh, download the app and plug everything in. It's pretty much self-explanatory. So this is just going to sit there. I don't have to mess with this as far as programming and all that. So uh, I'm just going to play around with the app and see what happens and uh, go from there. So we're basically done here, or I am. <laughs> and uh, that's almost the end of the video here just because uh, I've already tested it. Uh, manually, so let's go test it through the uh, through the app. Uh, so I'm outside here, and uh, I'll just, uh, this app's pretty cool actually. Uh, so if you have a timer like this, uh, it's the Beehive thing. So what I do like about it is um, you could take a picture of what zone you have. So if you wanted to manually turn them on, like uh, let's use number six here, you could just do a test. Just a minute's fine. And then, uh, then something should happen. Yeah, so I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, so everything works. Uh, again, if you don't have this kind of timer, they're all the same basically as far as the way you wear them. And the thing goes back off. So this is a kind of an interesting way of uh, doing it. But anyways, uh, so we're done. Uh, that's pretty much all I got. Well, that was a pretty good uh, weekend project.